Hi everyone, welcome to another of my Avid tutorials. And today's tutorial is on how Avid handles media. This is not gonna go super in depth into all the settings and everything involving importing, exporting, transcoding. I have a longer video that covers all of that and I'll link to that down in the description. But this is really more conceptual to just understand what Avid is doing with the media and how it works and where it's stored. Because I know from teaching, this is one of the things that if you're coming out of a different editing program like Premiere or Final Cut Pro, tends to be the most confusing about Avid because it just works a little differently in this way. So I wanna show you how it works and hopefully explain a little bit about why it's set up like that. So I have an Avid project here that I've set up and it's just an empty project right now with the bin. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring some media into this. And I'll right click here and go to input. And you might think I'm gonna to go to import media. This would be where you would go if you're using Premiere for instance, um, but I'm not. I'm gonna to go to source browser and I'll talk about this difference in a second. And I'll find some clips I have that I want to bring into the project. In this case, I'm just going to grab these clips here and hit link. And they're all going to show up here with this little link icon. And what I just did is the same thing that happens when you import media into Premiere. It's bringing in a little tag to say, okay, I know where that clip is. It's still referencing the original file. And I could load these up and you know, scroll through them and edit with them if I needed to. Where Avid is different is it doesn't really want to work like this. And what I mean by that is it will, as I just showed, I could, you know, put in clips here and I can play with them and set in points and out points and I can even edit them into a sequence. But Avid is not really built under the hood to work best this way. It's going to be a little bit inefficient in the way it's doing it and I'll try to show you some of those differences. What it really wants to do is work with media that has been put into a particular format that the Avid engine can work with really quickly and really efficiently. So this is really what you want to do if you're trying to use Avid to its fullest potential and take advantage of the fact that it really is a very efficient engine under the hood and allows you to work very, very quickly and has some advantages in that way that programs like Premiere and Final Cut don't. But the trade-off is I have to work with my media in a particular way. I'll show you how to do this and also say this is similar to what you would use in um, some other software like Adobe Premiere in terms of what they call proxies. It's the same concept. Uh, I'm going to take my original footage and convert it into some other type of clip, some different codec or resolution or whatever it is that the software can handle better and I can edit with better for one reason or another. Maybe the files are a lot smaller. Maybe it's a codec that's easier on the processor. Again, I talk about some of this in the longer tutorial. But I'm trying to do the same thing is make it easier on my engine. Just the way I do that and handle it works a little bit differently here than in some other software. And thinking about this in comparison to like proxies in Premiere is a good analogy, but you see it works a little bit differently. So I'm gonna take these clips I brought in and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to transcode them to a different form that Avid is gonna be happy to work with. And real quick, before I do that, I'm just going to remove some of these extra audio tracks because this is footage from a Sony FS7 that has a bunch of empty audio tracks in it that I don't need. Okay, so I've just simplified these down a little bit. You can see now it's treating them as just one video and two audio tracks. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna select all these, right click, and I'm gonna select consolidate slash transcode and set this to transcode. And what that means is going to take these clips and convert them into some other form. So I'll have some different options here. The options will depend on what your frame rate is and your resolutions. For instance, you can see some of these options here. If I went back and changed my project settings to let's say uh, UHD instead of 1080p. So now that's changed. If I go back in here to transcode, you'll see I have some different options. For instance, I have my DNX HR codecs available instead of DNX HD. If you're working in Avid, Avid really likes the DNX HR if you're working above 1080 and DNX HD if you're working in 1080 or below. And I would use one of those options and use the smaller ones. So for instance, the LB version, if you're doing an offline creative edit and you're ultimately gonna relink to your master material, if you're gonna do this transcode and then just edit and color and visual effects and everything else with those and never going back to your master clips, then I would select the HQ or the HQX because you want kind of the highest quality version of this. So in this case, I'll just go with the LB one. We'll say I'm doing a creative edit. I have to select what drive it's going to. So I'm gonna select this external drive here. Make sure that these are checked so that I'm converting the audio format in the clip into the same format as the rest of the project. And I'll hit transcode. And this will take a bit to do as it goes through all the clips. So I'll just fast forward through this and then we'll meet back. 
Okay, so we're back. Transcodes are finished. You can see I have four new versions of these clips. And this is one way in which this is going to look different than Premiere. In Premiere, you do your proxies and it's all behind the scenes. And there's a little toggle button where you can switch between looking at the proxies or looking at the original clips and kind of alternate which you're working with. Here, the transcoded clips actually show up as new clips. So I could load these up and you can see they have the same footage in them. I can work with them the same way, but they're actually in here treated as different clips. And that's important. They do have all the information about these original clips. So later on, if I'm color grading or doing visual effects or something, and want to relink back to the original clips. It's easy for me to show those in my edit instead of these transcodes. But it is worth noting that in the actual editor, they're going to show up differently. And in fact, something I like to do is to make sure that I'm working with the right ones is I'm going to call this original bin my linked media. And then I'm going to make a new bin and call this transcoded media. And I'm going to take all these transcodes and just drag them into this bin and then close this bin. And that way I know that I'm working with the right ones. I don't really want to work with the linked media. I want to work with these transcodes. Now this whole step where I had to transcode it and kind of go away for a minute and wait, that's something that takes some getting used to for people, particularly transitioning over from Premiere, where you like to just bring in your footage and immediately start playing with it and editing with it. And that's exciting. I get, you know, we'd all like to do that. This is something that when you're working with Avid, you want to kind of schedule around. I'm going to bring in my stuff and then give it time to do all the transcodes. Personally, I usually do this overnight, like I'm organizing a project during the day. And then before I go to bed at night, I start a bunch of transcodes and they're all done in the morning and ready to edit with. But you do want to build in that time to do this now so that you're working with these correct files. That's how Avid wants you to work. Now, I said this tutorial was going to tell you how Avid handles media. And what I want to show you is where these came from. So my original linked media were wherever I left them, which in this case was on this external drive here. And they're just sitting right there and they could be wherever you had originally had them, same way you would with any other editor. Once Avid transcodes the stuff, part of the way that it works really efficiently is it puts them in a very specific format that it wants and keeps them in a specific place where it can keep track of them. And this is this folder that says Avid media files. And so any drive that you've transcoded stuff onto is going to have this folder. So here's another drive I have. You can see this has an Avid Media Files in it as well. And it always has to be at the root of the drive. So if I take this and move it anywhere else, my media is not going to work. Avid needs this to be where it is and for the media to be inside in a specific location, which is going to be inside this MXF folder, and then inside these numbered folders inside it, and finally open up this numbered folder, and here's all my media. And you'll notice I have a whole bunch of clips, even though I only transcoded four things. And the reason is it's going to split out my video and each of my individual audio tracks into their own files and put them in an MXF wrapper. And it's also going to give them these unique IDs, which are these very long nonsensical identifiers that you can't make heads or tail of. You might say, wait, how am I supposed to know what my media is? And the answer is you're not really supposed to be messing around in here. This is where Avid puts its stuff. It's going to delete things as it needs to. It's going to create things as it needs to. And you really shouldn't be messing around in here if you don't know what you're doing. But I want you to see what's happening under the hood is it created all of these. And those are the files I'm editing with now. And as long as these files are here in this format, in the correct location where Avid wants them, Avid is going to work with no sort of lags or delays or anything. That's the advantage of this is it's very tightly controlling what's going on under the hood and how it accesses this media so that it can work with it extremely efficiently. Just to show you what I was talking about. So right now I can load up any of these clips and let's just say that I change the name of this. So I'll just put a little X in front of it. Boom. My media goes offline because Avid is looking for the specific folder in this specific location for it to find things. Put the name back and my media shows up back again. If I put this anywhere other than the root of a drive, so just make another folder and I'll put this in here. And you'll notice all my stuff is still here. Still Avid Media Files, MXF, numbered folder inside it. But everything's offline. Again, everything has to be in exactly the right place in exactly the right form. Now, you don't have to do this. You will saw that just happened under the hood when I said transcode to that drive. Avid created that folder, Avid Media Files. It didn't exist before, actually. And it created this MXF inside it. It made all this media inside it. So it's going to take care of all this by itself. I don't have to do anything with it, but I think it's important to understand this is what's going on. So my media is, of course, all back now. When I said that it is dealing with this stuff under the hood by itself, Take a look here. You can see I have four video files here, these ones that start with B, and eight audio files, these ones that start with A. And let's just say I turned out I don't need this clip here, so I'm going to delete it. 
It'll give me an option to just delete the master clip, meaning just take this out of my session. I don't want to see it, but the media is still there. Or it could say, hey, you could actually delete the media that goes along with this. And in this case, if I'm really saying, you know, I didn't even need to transcode this file. It's for a different project entirely. I don't want it, whatever. It's clogging up my drive. I could do this. And it's going to make sure that I'm correct that I want to do that. And I'll say, okay, delete it. When I go back here now, you'll see now I only have six audio files and three video files because it deleted those things out of this folder. So it's keeping track of them. Now I want to make it clear, I did not delete my original media. That is never happening here. If I go back here to the linked media, it's still here. I can still access it where it's referencing the original file. I just deleted that transcoded version that Avin made of it. If I'm working with my linked media and I go to delete one of these, I hit delete. It's only going to let me delete the master clip. There's not an option in Avid to delete your original linked media. It's not going to let you do that by accident. Now you can go into your own folder and delete stuff all you want, but you're not going to accidentally delete your original camera master files here. It'll only let you delete through that interface, the transcoded media. I'll also mention you can have more than one of these numbered files. So if I go into this drive here, Inside this MXF, you can see I have a bunch of numbered folders, and these can be ways to keep track of things from different projects or different segments of the same project. Or if you have too many files to fit into one of those, there is a cap on how many files Avid will put into one of these. And if it reaches that cap, it'll just create its own next numbered folder and keep going from there. Again, you normally don't have to deal with this yourself behind the scenes, but that's kind of what's happening. And then the last thing I wanted to say is keep talking about this working more efficiently and running really smoothly. I just want to show you what I mean by that. So here's my transcoded media. And what I'd like you to notice is just as I grab this, I scroll through, I hit L a couple times, play in fast motion, hit J a few times, play in fast reverse motion, hit K to pause it, I drag this to anywhere. And you see everything I do, it's just instantaneously response. There's no lag, no delay. It's working as quickly as I can think. If I go to my original media, the original clips, I can work with those and I can drag this through. So you can see it's just lagging a little bit. I hit L a few times and it just took a second to start playing. I hit J a bunch of times and you can see it's taking just a second to catch up to the speed I want it to go and start playing at that speed. Whereas when I go to my transcoded media, load up one of these files, you can see it's instant. Hit J a bunch of times, it's already at max speed. Hit L a bunch of times, it's already at max speed. Pause, in point, jump here, out point put it into a sequence, boom, everything's happening instantaneously as fast as I can work. And that's the advantage of Avid if you're handling your media right and taking that time as you should to do these transcodes and get it into the format that it wants to work with. Again, it'll let you work with the original media just like you can in Premiere or Final Cut or wherever else, but you're not taking full advantage of what the software can do and kind of working with one hand a little bit behind your back, particularly as you get into larger projects with lots of media or cases where you're working with really complicated media for it to process, either very high resolution or in a raw format, you know, something like red footage is tough for it to work with natively. You can do it, you can load it up in here, but man, editing with that natively is just super slow. So you want to do these transcodes, get the media into a form that Avid can work with at maximum efficiency, and then you can edit as fast as you can think of ideas and what you want to do with it. Over the years, I've seen a lot of students who start in Avid and they just want to treat it like Premiere, drag in my stuff and immediately start editing. And you can, but it's kind of like you've bought this fancy sports car, but you're riding it with the parking brake a little bit on. It's just not going to be quite as smooth as it should be or give you all the performance that you really want and should expect out of it because you're not using it in the way it's designed to be used. I want to show you one last thing with these transcodes, which is that once I have them and they're in that Avid database, now they're accessible across all sorts of projects. So if I were to close this project and open up a different one, so I'm just gonna pick a random project that's already here. I can go into this thing called the media tool, which the longer tutorial gets into more detail on. Say, hey, let me see footage from that tutorial project. And here's my clips. And these are the master clips you can see. I can also see where my linked clips were. And I could take any one of these or all these, just grab them, boom, pop them right in here. And they're immediately available in this project as well because they're still referencing that same Avid media that was already created. I don't have to retranscode them if I want to use something in a different project. That's not something that's of use a ton of the time where you're moving media from one project to another, but it is a good thing to know about, particularly if you created something, maybe it's like a production company logo 
and you used it in one project and you're like, oh, I want to throw that at the beginning of these other projects I had, it's very easy to just bring them into new projects once they've already been transcoded properly in Avid. So that's our intro to Avid Media. Hope you enjoyed that. If you want more detail on this and particularly going through some of the settings for importing and exporting and working with the media tool and how all that works, again, go to the description below and you can check out the longer version of the Avid Media tutorial. Thanks.